December and January are the wettest, windiest months in 30 years at Edwards Air Force Base. The first of the two Daedalus planes was finished weeks ago and shipped out here from Massachusetts. But the weather has put flight testing a month behind schedule. The team and planes need to be in Greece and ready to fly by mid-March in order to catch one of the few spring days when the weather will be right for a record attempt. It's now early February. Every inch of Daedalus is meticulously crafted and a marvel of lightweight design. But it's so fragile that a gust of wind could tear it apart. Uh, I think that the wind is definitely too much. I mean, I think we should scratch. 4.8, 4.95. The builders are extremely protective of their million dollar airplane. Yeah. It's, start, it's starting to gust. All right, all right, let's put it in. They take no chances with the weather, even though they've had only a fraction of the flight time they'd hoped for. No one wants to risk an accident this late in the game. Then, just two weeks before the scheduled departure for Crete, everyone's worst fear is realized. A team member's eight millimeter camera records the action. Full left rudder and keep the nose, nose down, keep the speed up. Hold in that full left rudder, hold in the full left rudder. Wow. Keep, keep put the nose down, speed it up slightly, not too fast though, not oh, too no. fast. Keep the wings level, keep the wings level. Left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder. The flare, oh. The pilot is okay, but Daedalus is not. So continue to make your correction around to the left. 24 hours later, the engineers gather at Hanscom Field to watch the tape and figure out what went wrong. Slightly, not too fast on that. Keep the wings level, keep the wings level. Left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder, full left rudder. The flare up. Well, no, that's pretty hard to tell. It really is. After so much work and attention to detail, how could something like this happen? Was it pilot error, mechanical failure, bad luck? Eventually, it's decided that the problem had been built into the plane. Most airplanes, including the Light Eagle, have ailerons, movable surfaces on the wingtips that the pilot uses to control bank angle and maintain level flight. But to save weight, the Daedalus was built without ailerons. Instead, it was supposed to have more dihedral or upsweep of the wings. If there's enough, this tends to keep the plane level. It was to be done by lengthening the wire underneath, allowing the wing to bend up in reaction to the force of lift. But because of disagreement within the design team about how much was enough, the Daedalus ended up with less dihedral than it needed. And when a gust of wind lifted one wing, the plane went into a slow spiral dive, which the pilot could not correct. Left rudder, full left rudder. We have an airplane which is, which is all smashed up, but about two weeks worth of work to fix. Um, the improvements, and in some sense, are obvious. I mean, the problem with, with all these things is that, uh, accident like this, is that the hindsight is 2020. We're going to increase the dihedral. We're going to do some testing with the Light Eagle with increased dihedral. That'll give us the, the information we need to either say, well, this is not going to work or it will work, and just go ahead for Greece with that. We don't have much time. At this point, we're under a lot of pressure. I mean, in order to finish the current ship, which is on the hangar, we have probably another 600 man hours worth of work to do in a very short time. And the problem is getting rapidly to the point where it has to be done by very few people, too, because they're the only ones who are qualified to do the work. But that ship will be, be finished by our elite crew on the middle of next week, and then go out to California. From now on, there's very little sleep for the building crew. The move to Greece has been set back a month. And if there are any more delays, they won't make the spring weather window this year, or perhaps ever. 
By the end of February, the new plane called Daedalus 88 is in California ready for testing, while Daedalus 87 is back in Boston being repaired. From now on, everything has to work perfectly. As it turns out, the suspense is short-lived. That's good. With more than twice the dihedral of Daedalus 87, Daedalus 88 seems to be perfect. It's finally clear that the plane has reached its ideal form and is ready to take on the myth it was named for. On the evening of March 26th, a C-130 transport plane provided by the Greek Air Force is on its final approach into the Heraklion Airport on Crete. Inside are the two Daedalus planes and the Light Eagle, outboard motors, spare parts, computers, and all the other necessities of human-powered flight. From this point on, the Daedalus project is a bilingual, bicultural effort. We, we get later. I think for one. It's short. Oh. Very light. Oh, no, 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 no. This is okay. 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 The Greeks embrace the project with a passion. Every Greek child knows the story of Daedalus and Icarus. Here, it's the impetuous son Icarus, not Daedalus, who is honored as the mythical pioneer of flight. So, on the nearby island of Icaria, the Hellenic Air Force Icarians welcome the Daedalus team to Greece. The project is now very much in the public eye. The Greeks are providing extensive support and anything short of total success will be hard to explain. But back on Crete, the difficulty of what they're trying to do begins to sink in. A hangar is set up to house the planes beside the runway where Daedalus will take off. The next day, gale force winds nearly blow it away, along with the unassembled plane inside. In fact, the wind seems to blow constantly on Crete. Looking out to sea, it's difficult to imagine a day calm enough to fly a human-powered airplane. A team of meteorologists has been studying the weather along the flight route for three years, and the statistics say that there should be two or three calm days in April before it gets too hot to fly. Somehow, those numbers seem more theoretical here than they did back in Massachusetts. The pilots are cycling up to 100 miles each day in the mountains. To prepare for a major endurance effort, an athlete has to train hard and then taper for a day or two before the event so that he's rested, but still in peak condition. The five pilots are on a rotating schedule like baseball pitchers so that someone is always ready. The one who makes the flight will be the one who's up in the rotation on the day when the weather is right. All right. To replace the energy they burn off in training, the pilots have to consume six to 7,000 calories a day, more than three times what the average American eats. Carbohydrates account for 70% of the diet. A typical breakfast includes three different kinds of cereal with honey, half a loaf of bread, butter, a quart of milk, hard-boiled eggs, cheese, and several pieces of fruit. It took a professional nutritionist to convince the kitchen staff that each pilot would need this much food for dinner every night. With human engines, it's important to keep the fuel tanks full. The Hotel Exenia in Heraklion has now been taken over by the Daedalus team. 
In a corner of the lobby that serves as headquarters, Steve Busolari's weather reports we'll have become a daily ritual. The, the bridging that we expected to take place of the high pressure over the area has in, has in fact taken place. The news uh, is starting to get better. A high pressure system is developing over the region, which could result in calm weather for several days. So, in view of that, uh, I think that tomorrow is definitely going to be uh, a possibility. It's decided that the team should be flight ready in the morning. Okay, great. See you at 3 a.m. Get up, man. It's flying time. Let's go. 3.30 a.m. It's still hours before sunrise, but there's a lot to be done. The first boat crew heads out to get wind measurements offshore. They stay in touch with Steve, who's been up most of the night watching the weather. Another crew assembles the plane at the airfield, while today's pilot, Greg Zach, warms up unaware that his chances of flying today are already starting to slip. I don't think we're going to go. It's my feeling now. I just don't I don't like the I don't like the weather situation. I don't like the fact that we don't Just offshore in the command boat. Steve has had reports of high winds aloft at Santorini. Everyone stands by waiting for his final decision. Greg has been sealed into the plane and pointed down the runway, but Steve has already made his decision. Daedalus, this is command boat. We're going to scrub the flight. Uh, I want you to have the, uh, get the pilot out, disassemble the airplane. With so much riding on the decision, it's a difficult moment for Greg and for Steve. We've just started waiting for the weather. Do we jump at the first day that comes along or do we look for something better? Uh, maybe today was the kind of day that we would have gone if, uh, if, it, if it, we'd been waiting for six weeks. When you mean that, when I cross yeah, over. When you cross over here. Now, Frank Scotia is up in the rotation for tomorrow, and Steve goes over the takeoff with him. Let's start with the worst that could happen okay. first, okay? You hit this stuff, and you, and you lose control. The one wing picks up, and it slips like crazy. And it, mm -hmm. The problem is the 140-foot drop off the end of the runway which could cause air currents that would make the plane hard to handle. As you come over the edge here, you, you, may, feel, you may feel it start to settle with one wing. Just give it some rudder. You got plenty of room it's the there. kind of situation that would be routine for an experienced pilot like Steve, but it could be trouble for less experienced flyers like Frank and the other Daedalus pilots. You're saying, let's get clear of the land. You're saying... It's just one more of the many things that could go wrong. What we're attempting here is, is not something that's a shoe-in. Uh, I think that, uh, that we have a real chance of failure here. And, uh, uh, but it's the, it's, if it were easy, I don't think we'd be as interested in it. Another early morning at the airfield. But this time, there's a strong feeling that the moment has arrived. I think this is it. I think today is the day. I'll see you out of the water. OK, hopefully you see me uh, at yeah. the beach as well as out on the water. All right, make it a good one, Frank. Okay. An hour later, Frank is ready to go. But out on the command boat, Steve's optimism has disappeared. Okay, I've made my decision. We're going to scrub it. Sorry about that, Frank. Let's. Uh, At the last the moment, the wind suddenly picked up. Now it's Frank's turn to deal with the adrenaline he'd pumped up for the flight and try to get his mind back on training. With the engineers rushing to get the plane out of the wind, the only sympathy comes from his fellow pilot. I think that maybe the rest of the people in Project, not all of them, but a lot of them have a hard time appreciating what, what the, the pilot has to go through and what some of the psychological aspects of getting ready to make that flight are. You can't do that very often. That's everything you have to, to be ready for that. As it turns out, no one will have to do it very often. For almost three weeks, it's so windy that Daedalus never leaves the hangar. The pilots have no problem staying busy. There's not only training, but the attention of the press to deal with. The Greek pilot Canellos is very much in demand. 
He's already well known as the country's top cyclist. And his status on the Daedalus team is a big story in the Greek press, especially since there's no guarantee that he will make the flight. It's an American project, and there is a Greek in there, and now we are in Greece. It's normal focusing on, on him, because they, they expect of me uh, doing the flight. Uh, they, they, cannot, they cannot think about doing the flight someone else. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> it may not be popular with the press, but the rotation continues. Two days on, six days off for each pilot, and the training never stops. The spring weather window is getting smaller every day. In a few weeks, it'll be too hot for the pilots to fly, and the project will be out of money. Steve spends most of his time at the Air Force weather station or on the phone with meteorologists in the United States, trying to make sense of the unpredictable Aegean weather. But for Thursday, it's Thursday morning, it's starting to move. And by look at it, it becomes a trough. Finally, in the third week of April, the forecast starts to improve. On Friday, April 22nd, Steve tells the team to be flight ready Saturday morning. Canellos is up in the rotation. Looks good, Yanis. Feels right to me. Early Saturday morning, the weather appears to be perfect. Cool temperature and very light winds from the south. Canelos nervously awaits what he hopes will be the triumphant final act of the Daedalus project. Uh, command boat, this is takeoff site. Just got an update from the inflatable that was 1.6 to 2.1 meters per second from the south. Okay, fine. Well, we're going to go. It's time for Canelos to take the stage. And he does it with an inside joke for the engineers. Oh, lightning holes. <laughs> <laughs> the, of the, day. the holes in his shorts are his gesture toward the obsessive drive to reduce weight in the airplane. Take off sight, this is Steve. We got the south wind at Santorini, we got a south wind here, we got a south wind at Dia. I think we're in uh, good shape. If it holds, the light tailwind from the south will increase the plane's speed, shortening the flight time. But Canelo still must carry a heavy six-hour supply of the energy replacement drink, just in case. Okay, I'm looking at the smoke now. Uh, we got a fairly good downdraft coming over that lip, and uh, I'd like to see him uh, three or four meters above the runway surface when he goes over that. Yeah, okay, okay. Are you uh, ready for takeoff at this time? Over. Okay, Steve. Okay, Canelos. Ella, the taxi. Off. He's up. Well, the research part of this project is officially over. Good, Canales. Looks great. Awesome. Here we go. Morea, Canales. Morea. What's your airspeed, Canales? 14. 14, that sounds good. Uh, what's your heart rate, over? 145. The Greek Navy, Coast Guard, and Air Force are on hand for emergency support and to keep the pathway clear. But Daedalus doesn't seem to need any help. The plane and pilot perform beautifully, and with a boost from the tailwind, 
The only concern is that it will all be over too soon. You're making about 18 knots, 18 knots. If you keep up this speed over the bottom, it's only three hours to Santorini from here, which is a piece of cake. But we'll keep you posted on the speed. Over. The only landmarks now are the world records falling one by one. First down is the Gossamer Albatross straight line record of 22 miles. Then it's the Light Eagle's absolute distance mark at 37 miles. Finally, the Gossamer Albatross duration record at 2 hours and 49 minutes. But the records have become almost a footnote to the experience. The greater satisfaction now comes from the realization of a dream, a modern mythical creature, half man, half machine, living out the earliest fantasy of flight. Almost four hours into the journey, Daedalus approaches its final goal, the island of Santorini. Get ready to lay the smoke for us. Uh, it's just over those boats. The flight has been flawless, almost routine. Canelos could probably keep going for hours, but the gods are not going to let the mortals off so easily. The wind is suddenly picked up. Steve, the smoke is coming out. Canelos will have to come in parallel to the beach for an upwind landing. Okay, let's get the beach clear, beach people. And uh, Canelos, I want 20 degrees to the right. Give me a good right turn. We gotta have, I want to give you plenty of room to approach that landing site. Over. Okay, don't worry. I never worry. Okay, they look good now. Okay, we've got a big headwind here. We're barely making any way at all. Um, Canelos, uh, that looks good. Maintain this heading. There are people running on the beach now. I think there's a lot of people running. Okay, well, don't worry about them. We're going to land where they aren't. Caught in the strong headwind, Canelos is having trouble approaching the beach. Okay, maintain that heading. Maintain that heading. I want the wing runners right there. He's going to set down almost vertically. Okay, you're looking good, Canellas. A little bit of a right hand correction. A little bit of a right hand correction. Easy, keep the. Uh oh. Uh oh. A gust of wind snapped the tail boom and then the wing, turning Daedalus into Icarus. The first thought is for the safety of Canellas. But before the crowd can reach him, he's out of the plane and on the beach, looking refreshed after his swim. The records have been set, and no one is disappointed. And while the effort may seem to be short on practical benefits, a pursuit like this can inspire progress in technology by changing ideas about where the limits lie. If a plane can fly with a quarter horsepower engine, what else is possible? Pretty good. It would have been a little nicer if we hadn't broken it up, but it's good to be here. It's a long flight. That was easy. Huh? That was easy. The, landing, the landing was the most difficult part. Ah, oh, well, we, we had not the right weather. <laughs> yeah. Hey.
Funding for NOVA is provided by 